We're going to look here at a couple of advanced problems with integration by parts. The first one involves an initial substitution, and the second one involves an algebraic manipulation at the end of the problem. In order to understand these, you should have some experience with integration by parts. So we're going to look at the integral of 4x cubed cosine of x squared. Now what bothers me is this x squared within the cosine. And so what my natural instinct tells me to do is to make a substitution for x squared. And because I know where I'm headed, and I'm not going to use a u. We're going to look at a couple of advanced examples using integration by parts. The first one is going to have an initial substitution, and the second one will have an algebraic manipulation at the end. In order to understand these, you should have some familiarity with integration by parts already. Our first example is the integral of 4x cubed cosine of x squared. Now this cosine of x squared bothers me. So I want to make an initial substitution for x squared. Because I know where I'm headed, I'm going to use w as my variable. I'll let w be equal to x squared. So w is x squared. When I take the derivative of x squared, I get 2x. Multiply both sides by dx, I get dw is 2x dx. Now, ordinarily, I might panic at this point because 2x dx does not match the 4x cubed over here that I have. But if I start rewriting things just a little bit, and pull 2x off of the 4x cubed, I'll still be left with a 2x squared, which might seem a little bit problematic at first, but x squared is what we let w be equal to. So when I make my substitution, I'll still have a w out front here, a w on the inside, and then this is my dw. So just following the color-coded, we make our substitution, changing things in terms of w, we end up with the integral of 2w cosine of w dw. Now, if you're familiar, you should be familiar with integration by parts, and at this point we say, aha, I know the integral of cosine of w, but this 2w is in the way, is in the way. So subst or integration by parts is appropriate here. We'll let u be the factor inside the integrand that's in the way, which in our case is the 2w. So d d du is 2 dw, dv is everything else. We need to find a function whose derivative is the cosine of w, and that function would be the sine of w. So we're going to look at this integral on the next slide. There are my u's and v's, and here's my integral. I use my formula for integration by parts, u times v, minus the integral of v times du. So here is your u, v, minus the integral of v du. Well, now the second integral is easy to evaluate. We need a function whose derivative is basically negative 2 sine of w. And that's just going to be 2 times the cosine of w. Remember that the derivative of the cosine is negative sine. Now, remember, we had an initial substitution. w was equal to x squared, so if we re-substitute, we have our function whose derivative is equal to the original problem of 4x cubed cosine of x squared. The second example we're going to look at runs kind of counter to what we expect and what we've seen with some of these other integration by parts problems. Here we have two functions, e to the x, and the sine of 8x in this case, both of which have sort of cyclic derivatives. What do I mean? e to the x's derivative is e to the x. The derivative of the sine of x, if you continue to take it, eventually you'll back, be back at sine of x. If you take higher order derivatives, that is. So what we're going to do in this case is it really doesn't matter which one we choose to be u and which one we choose to be v, dv, that is. But it's easier to, inter to differentiate things than it is to integrate. And the more complicated thing here to differentiate would be that guy. So I'm going to choose u to be the sine of 8x. dv will be e to the x dx. When I take the derivative, I have to use the chain rule. du will be 8 cosine of 8x dx. 
v, dv is everything else, e to the x dx, its antiderivative is e to the x. So I do it again. I'm going to take u times v minus the integral of v times du. So here is all those, here are all those pieces put together. We've got u times v minus the integral of v times du. But here we have that problem again. Our problem is that we have a cyclic function, a function with cyclic derivatives and multiplied by another function with cyclic derivatives. So again, I would have a choice, choose u or choose d and choose dv. But since I already chose u to be my trig function, let's choose u to be the trig function once again. So u is going to be, I'll just take everything that's over here, the whole 8 cosine of 8x. u is equal to that. Derivative of the cosine is negative sine, so we're going to have negative sine of 8x. A new factor of 8 pops out from the chain rule, so we'll have 8 times 8, which is 64. dv is still e to the x dx, whose antiderivative is e to the x. So on the next slide, we'll have our initial integral here, our initial step. And I'll also list our new u and dv. And so where do we go from here? Well, we've got to be very careful because of this minus sign. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in some brackets when I go to the next step here. So I've got minus. And I've got this opening bracket and this closing bracket because this negative will have to be distributed. We're going to do u times v minus the integral of v times du. And du is this awful negative 64 sine of 8x dx. Now with a little bit of with a little simplification, distribute the negative through, and we've got this negative, this negative, and this negative. We'll still have a negative back here. Factor the 64 out we end up with this equation. Now it might seem like we're spinning our wheels because what do we have? We've kind of gotten back to where we started, haven't we? Actually, that's a good thing. We started off with the integral of e to the x sine of 8x, and we are now at a stage where we have a multiple of our original integral. And so here's the algebraic manipulation I mentioned earlier. We're going to take this term, the negative 64, integral of e to the x sine of 8x and add it to both sides. And what that will do is it will give us 65 of them on the left-hand side. So we have 65 times our desired integral is equal to everything else that was there before on the right-hand side, e to the x sine of 8x minus e to the x cosine of 8x. Well, if 65 times my integral is equal to all this mess, how could I find out what my integral is equal to? divide both sides by 65. And so our integral that we started off with at the beginning is 1 65th e to the x sine of 8x minus e to the x cosine of 8x.